Yes, it's another day in Iceland. Actually, another day near here. We're day four now. Once again, fourth day ice climbing. And now we are in the we are in South Park. Park. Living the life. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Today, I think I'm going to focus on the tight macro shots so you can kind of see some of this funky, sharp ice gear in action. We'll see how creative we can get. All right, instead of just showing us climbing all day long, let's add a little educational aspect to this video. So we're here with Pat with the San Juan Mountain Guides. He's the one that's been helping us uh, facilitate all this climbing. And we're gonna ask him a very important question, and that is, how on earth do we efficiently swing these? And is there one specific swing, or is there multiple different ones? Well, there's multiple different swings, and it depends on your tool. Some tools rotate around your pinky, around the pommel. A tool like this with the big ergo handle rotates a little more around my index finger. Mm -hmm. But whatever tool you're using, the key is to keep everything in line. So when I swing the tool, I'm in line from my shoulder, elbow, wrist on down. And it starts with that relaxed grip. And then a good back swing. And then when I swing, think about follow through. And it often can be helpful for people to think about swinging about two inches past the surface of the ice. So that way you're still accelerating the tool all the way through the swing. Now, how hard should we be swinging? Um, well, I think that's a little... You have to play around with that um, because it's not actually strength and muscle. It takes some to swing the tool, but really what we're trying to do is accelerate the tool and use the weight of the head to drive the pick in. So actually a good drill if you're climbing on top rope is to go with one swing and first stick and see what holds. And that'll give you a gauge as to how hard and how fast you want to swing the tool. We're back with Conrad Anchor, and we're going to ask him a question to help us uh, improve our ice climbing. So Conrad, um, when we're swinging these axes and we're gripped out, we're just choking up on them, what can we do to avoid that pump in our arms and our hands? Well, first off, understand that your grip is going to be the same throughout. So you have a pretty uniform grip. So train with this grip at home, and then when you're up there on the roof, try to relax as much as you can and get as much weight onto the feet. Drop it down, shake, rest, move it around to different positions, but always remember, it's a huge hold, it's a bucket. Don't let go, shake it out, get the blood back in, and then send to the root. All right, Ann, do you mind if I ask you a question? No, go for it. Okay, I want to learn a little bit more of like footwork. Okay, I'm a rock climber, but using these crampons, it just feels a lot different. So what can you tell me about like just efficiently putting the points in, where my heels should be, and so forth? Yeah, I think one of the biggest differences, especially from rock climbing to ice climbing, is not high stepping. You know, rock climbing, we're kind of always high stepping. You're always on that one leg. With ice climbing, we want to have a nice wide platform, and that creates our balance. And so most of our stability comes from our legs and not so much from our arms. That also allows you to relax your arms a lot more. Um, another thing is making sure you kick, you kind of flex your toes, and that allows the, the front point to engage a lot easier into the ice. Uh, what happens a lot is people have their heels up and their toes down, and they kick with that top of the boot. So if you can think about kicking from your knee, flexing that toe, you're gonna engage that front spike a lot more, and then you can have a nice 
wide stance to create that balance point so you can go hands free and rest a lot more on your feet. Now once you get the points in the ice, they say to keep your heels down. Can you share with the people watching what's the benefit of keeping your heels down? Well, one, it takes a lot less pressure off your calves. If you're up on your toes, your calves are engaged. And also, it's not going to allow you to fully engage those spikes. So the more that you can bring those heels down, it engages the, the spikes underneath here into that ice. It creates a nice steady platform. All right, so instead of just your front points being in the ice, you're getting those secondary points in there as well. Yeah, more points of contact. A, yeah, a wide area like this, you're getting more, definitely more points of contact. Let me tell you about Ben Eaton, the real story. <laughs>